Ethnopoetics is a method of recording text versions of oral poetry or narrative performances i.e. verbal lore that uses poetic lines, verses, and stanzas instead of prose paragraphs to capture the formal, poetic performance elements which would otherwise be lost in the written texts. The goal of any ethnopoetic text is to show how the techniques of unique oral performers enhance the aesthetic value of their performances within their specific cultural contexts. Major contributors to ethnopoetic theory include Jerome Rothenberg, Dennis Tedlick, and Del Himes. Ethnopoetics is considered a subfield of ethnology, anthropology, folkloristics, stylistics, linguistics, and literature and translation studies. A need for ethnopoetics, Rothenberg Jerome Rothenberg coined the term ethnopoetics in the 1960s. According to Catherine S. Quick, Rothenberg had recognized that most translations of Native American oral traditions failed to capture the power and beauty of the oral performances on the written page, especially when Western poetic styles were imposed upon these written texts 1999-96. Rothenberg's influence has increased public awareness of the rich narrative and poetic traditions of cultures all over the world. Topic. Ethnopoetic theory, Tedlick and Himes The development of ethnopoetics as a separate subfield of study was largely pioneered from the middle of the 20th century by anthropologists and linguists such as Dennis Tedlick and Del Himes. Both Tedlick and Himes used ethnopoetic analysis to do justice to the artistic richness of Native American verbal art, and while they have disagreed on some analytic details, they agree on the fundamental issues and purposes of ethnopoetics. Topic. Dennis Tedlick On the one hand, Dennis Tedlick argues not only that pauses in oral performances indicate where poetic line breaks should occur in the written texts, which he compares to musical scores, but also that words on the page should be formatted to reflect the more subtle qualities of speech used in oral performances. Tedlick explain his perspective in this way. An ethnopoetic score or text not only takes account of the words but silences, changes in loudness and tone of voice, the production of sound effects, and the use of gestures and props. Ethnopoetics remains open to the creative side of performance, valuing features that may be rare or even unique to a particular artist or occasion. In other words, Tedlick argues that by visually representing oral performance features in the written texts, ethnopoetic methods more accurately convey the aesthetic qualities of the performance than uniformly formatted text in prose paragraphs ever could. Tedlick himself defines ethnopoetics as a decentered poetics, an attempt to hear and read the poetries of distant others, outside the Western poetic tradition as we know it now. Topic. Del Himes. On the other hand, Del Himes believes that even previously dictated texts retain significant structural patterns of poetic repetition that are the reason why storytellers use pauses in their oral performances 1999, 97-98. Himes's ethnopoetic theories focus on repetitions in the grammar and syntax of transcribed and translated texts that he suggests can still be analyzed and retranslated. For example, accordingly to folklorist Bar Tolkien, the poetic beauty and power of Native American texts like The Sun's Myth have been restored because a dedicated anthropological folklorist and linguist, Del Himes, dedicated a good part of his life to resuscitating a dry, written text collected, by a long-dead anthropologist i.e., Franz Boas and stored away in a dusty volume 2003, 122. When Himes retranslated The Sun's Myth, he recovered the poetic and stylistic devices that were used in the original recorded performance, but which had been lost in the myth's earlier translation by Franz Boas. Himes' ethnopoetics revolves around a conception of narratives as primarily organized in terms of formal and aesthetic poetic patterns, not in terms of content or thematic patterns. Narrative is therefore to be seen as a form of action, of performance, and the meanings it generates are effects of performance. Narratives, seen from this perspective, are organized in lines and in groups of lines verses, stanzas, and the organization of lines in narratives is a kind of implicit patterning that creates narrative effect. Content, in other words, is an effect of the formal organization of a narrative, what there is to be told emerges out of how it is being told, Blomart 2007, 216. 
Also, understanding the native language of oral performers is essential for accurate, ethnopoetic translation of their words into written texts. For example, folklorist Bar Tolkien explains that Himes's knowledge of the extant Chinookan languages helped him to notice stylistic devices that highlighted certain actions and themes and even performance styles that brought scenes into sharp focus 2003, 122. In other words, without his knowledge of the native language of oral performers, Himes could not have placed his ethnopoetic translation of the Sun's Myth within its specific Native American cultural context. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Ethnopoetics, aesthetic movement or academic discipline. Various other writers and poets can be said to have contributed to the field of ethnopoetics as an aesthetic movement. For example, Tristan Zara created calligrams and William Bright worked with the Kurok tribe to preserve their native language. However, within the fields of linguistics, folkloristics, and anthropology, ethnopoetics refers to a particular method of analyzing the linguistic features and syntactical structures of oral literature such as poetry, myths, narratives, folk tales, ceremonial speeches, etc. in ways that pay attention to poetic patterns within speech. Overall, then, ethnopoetic methods and theories strive to capture on the written page the unique aesthetic elements of individual culture's oral poetry and narrative performance traditions, or what folklorists would call their verbal lore. References Bibliography Blomart, January 2007 Applied Ethnopoetics, Narrative State of the Art. Edited by Michael G. W. Bamberg. Amsterdam, John Benjamin's Publishing Company. Benjamin's Current Topics Series No. 595215, 215-224. Quick, Catherine, 1999. Ethnopoetics. Folklore Forum 30 95-105. Tedlick, Dennis. Syllabus. English 699, Ethnopoetics, Colleges of Arts and Sciences. University at Buffalo. Accessed the 22nd of November 2011. Tolkien, Barr, 2003. The Anguish of Snails. Volume 2, Folklife of the West, edited by Barr Tolkien and William A. Wilson. Logan, Utah State University Press. Topic. Additional resources. Himes, Del H. 1981. In Vain I Tried to Tell You. Essays in Native American Ethnopoetics. Studies in Native American Literature 1. University of Pennsylvania Publications in Conduct and Communication. Philadelphia, University of Pennsylvania Press. ISBN 0 8122 7806 2. Himes, Del H. 2003. Now I Know Only So Far Essays in Ethnopoetics. Lincoln, University of Nebraska Press. ISBN 0-8032-2407-9 HBK, ISBN 0-8032-7335-5 PBK. Tedlick, Dennis, 1972. Finding the Center, Narrative Poetry of the Sunni Indians. New York, Dial Press. Tedlick, Dennis, 1983. The Spoken Word and the Work of Interpretation. Philadelphia, University of Pennsylvania Press. ISBN 0-8122-7880-1. Tedlick, Dennis, 1999. Finding the Center, The Art of the Zuni Storyteller, 2nd edition. Lincoln, University of Nebraska Press. ISBN 0-8032-4439-8. External links. Ethnopoetics, Professor. Dennis Tedlick Ethnopoetics at the Millennium, Jerome Rothenberg, 5 May 1999 Selections from Alcheringa, PDF format Uboweb, a comprehensive, rather useful online anthology of poets, poems, manifestos, writings, materials, and anything related to ethnopoetics. Jerome Rothenberg Class on Ethnopoetics and Performance, MP3U Ethnopoetics New and Old.